What's up, our squad? Hey, welcome back to another week. And uh, before we get started, there's something that I gotta do. I gotta give props to Topsail High School. Thought you would never be able to do it. I didn't. I didn't think. I didn't think you'd pull it off. Friday night, you beat my school, Laney High School in football. So I gotta give it to you guys. Way to go. Way to go. That was unbelievable. Great game. Came down to the wire on a field goal kick. Way to get them, guys. Six and O, Topsil. You're doing awesome. A couple things that you need to know about, too, is our squad weekend is coming up at the end of November, November the 30th through December the 2nd. If you got signed up for D-Now Castle, it got canceled, so we have moved to an incredible weekend up at Crowder's Ridge, and our partners up there are going to make this thing awesome. You don't want to miss it. The, the winter shoots are going to be open. We've got the camp all to ourselves. It's going to be a fantastic time. So what are we talking about this week? Last week, we kind of began this journey into identity and what does it mean to be forgiven by God. Taking a look at who we are, our great parts, our flaws, and understanding that God has purpose for us, that God has given us an identity, even the things that embarrass us. I think it's a good thing to remember that we all have embarrassing moments. See, like even Beyonce has embarrassing moments, like this one when she got her hair caught in a fan at a concert in front of thousands of people. Yep, that's not coming out too easily. Taking it, yep, mm-hmm. And finally, they, they gotta cut it out. Just cut it right out. I remember one of the most embarrassing moments I ever had. I was in the eighth grade, and some of my friends that were high school students invited me to go to a concert festival with them. And I was really excited because, you know, I mean, like I'm a middle schooler, and a couple high school friends thought it would be cool to bring me along. So we arrive at the concert, and it's going great, and it's band after band after band, and we're out there, and at some point in the concert, uh, I don't remember what was going on at the time, but I got sick. And I was like, you know what? Mind over matter, I'm just gonna push it down. I'm just gonna push it down. And you know, I thought I was fine. Until the drive home. So we're on the drive home, and uh, my friend's parents came to pick us up. They had one of those cars you could lay all the seats down into the floor. Uh, so we were all laying there, had to drive through the night, so we're just kinda passed out asleep. It's pitch black dark, and then all of a sudden, I come out of my sleep and I got to puke. Now I remember that I had grabbed this bag and set it next to me that in case I had to throw up I could just grab the bag and puke. Well what happened was I grabbed the bag, I bring it over, I throw up and then I thought I was good. The mom's like, hey did you get it all in the bag, are you good? I'm like, yeah no worries, I got it all in the bag. And then I hear my friend go, Oh no, you didn't. See, what had happened was the bag had a big handle. And when I went to throw up, I, bleh, I puked all through the handle. So yeah, you wanna talk about embarrassing? That was a little bit embarrassing. Now, today I can kinda of look back on that and with those people and we laugh about it. But it took some time to get over how embarrassing that just was. Now, the reality is, is that you've probably been in that same place. And maybe in your small group you can share an embarrassing moment that you've had. But here's the problem. See, so we can get over sometimes the embarrassing things that we've done. But the difficult part is when we get embarrassed of who we are. Whether it's our bodies or our abilities or, or how smart we are, wh whatever it may be, no matter how insignificant or small it may seem, sometimes insecurities can get inside of us and drive us to make decisions that aren't good or decisions that keep us from doing something that we'd really love to be a part of. See, I believe one of the greatest dangers of insecurity is the fact that we miss great opportunities. I know when I was in high school, uh, I was always through school the smallest kid around. And one of the things that I wish I had ran track. <laughs> but because of my insecurity, because of my uh, just thinking that I wasn't cut out for sports, I never even tried to run track. Then looking back, I think that was a real missed opportunity. See, here's the thing. Too often we let our insecurities become our identity. And we begin to operate based on what people 
might think about us and we don't take the risks that we should to experience what's greatest for our life. In the movie The Greatest Showman, we see this illustrated uh, in The Bearded Lady, Letty Lutz. And as the showman is walking down the street, he begins to hear this beautiful singing voice that's just captivating him. And he journeys from room to room and, and building, trying to find where this person is. And behind a curtain, absentmindedly singing, is the bearded lady. And he goes right to her and he's amazed at her voice. But she was hidden behind sheets and behind curtains while doing laundry not wanting to be seen by anybody. And the gift that she had was being enclosed in her own insecurities. Now, I'm sure you're probably not the bearded lady, but I also know that whether it's your family, your abilities, your social standing, your personality, there's something about you that most likely gives you some insecurity. And I want you to think about that insecurity as we begin to read what the Bible says about God's perspective of you. Now in the Bible, we have the book of Psalms. And the book of Psalms was written by King David. Now the unique thing about King David was that while he was a great warrior, he was also an incredible poet and an incredible songwriter. And David had this amazing perspective of how God viewed him and how God views you and me today. So in Psalms 139, starting in verse 13, I just want you to hear some of the key words from this passage. It says this, it says, You made all the delicate inner parts of my body, and you knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. So you watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion, as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment laid out before a single day had passed. How precious are your thoughts about me, O oh God. They cannot be numbered. I can't even count them. They, they outnumber the grains of sand. And when I wake up, you are still with me. See, when I read a passage like that, it's kind of difficult to let my insecurities drive me. I mean, I have a God who knit me together, that He created me as a workmanship, that He's always with me, He knows everything about me, and He thinks about me so much that you can't even number the thoughts that He has for me. As we wrap up, here's the question I want you to think about. Do you believe you have purpose? And if so, how do you know what it is. Just like we've seen from the character, the bearded lady, to King David, to even the words of the Apostle Paul that we talked about last week when he said that, that you are God's handiwork. You're his craftsmanship. You're, you're intentional. See, you do have purpose. And it starts by discovering who God created you to be with all the gifts and the talents and the interests and the quirks. See, he's given you those things. And then I think it's about taking those gifts and using them to be a part of something bigger than yourself. Using them to show love to people who often get overlooked. So this week, as you walk away, I want you to understand this. You have gifts. You have a voice. You have a purpose. So go and live like it.